As we gather in this morning, we're going to open up together with a word of prayer, and we're going to ask the Lord just to come and minister in our house today. Amen. So would you stand to your feet with me? And as we uh, begin to open this service up, we'll just ask the Lord's blessing to fall into this place. Amen. Bless each of our fathers that are here today and uh, ask the Lord just to have his way. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather in together this morning, we thank you for this opportunity, Father. God, we thank you for this time that we have to be gathered together in your house, in your presence, to worship and to praise you. And Lord, as we come before you this morning, we come together with singing. We come together with rejoicing. We come together with thanksgiving of heart, thanking you, Lord, that had it not been for you, Jesus, we would be not here in this house today, but rather, God, we'd be out in the world of sin and, Father, in despair. But because of you, we can gather together with hope and blessing in our hearts, rejoicing today, knowing that you're here with us. And so, Father, move and minister. Touch each father in this place this morning, God. And, uh, Father, we thank you that uh, your presence is with us. Now bless this morning's service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a good hand clap and greet your neighbors this morning. Good to see Pastor Mark and his family down here this weekend. Amen. Make sure you get around and say hello to him too. Amen. Rejoice. Let's sing together today. Rejoice. Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. They are ordered of God. Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. In the time of trouble, God will uphold him. God will preserve him. God will sustain him. morning. Amen. Mighty God. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me.
of Jesus. Oh, there's no God like our God. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. You're worthy this morning. We magnify you, God. We lift you up. Hallelujah. He's coming on the clouds and kings and kingdoms win.
lift your hands and worship before the lion and the lamb this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that you break every chain that binds us. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, when we are weak in battle, you make us strong. And we thank you, Lord, that you fight for us. All you have to do is speak the word, and victory is ours, and we thank you for it. Lord, we are weak in spirit, Lord, this morning, Lord, in physical body, Lord, but you will make us strong in spirit. Lord, and we pray, Father God, that you will fight for us, Lord, that we don't have to struggle anymore. Lord, but you'll make a way, and we thank you for it, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that there is no God like our God. Lord, you'll never let us down. You're faithful and true. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, this morning, why don't we lift our hands this morning? You know, that was a prophetic word that we just had spoken to us. And it's, an, and it's a revelation to us this morning to let us be aware that there is a time coming, that there's going to be a dispensation of this latter rain that's going to be poured out. And we need to be in the ark of God because when we're in the ark, you know what happens? We can receive of the Lord his blessings because he's our heavenly father. Amen. And this is what this prophecy was declaring unto us this morning. So this morning is a very important day. And I'm going to preach a message in just a little bit about that this morning. About how we need to make the decision to be on this side for the Lord. And make sure that our, our, uh, uh, make sure that our, our name is written in that Lamb's book of life. Amen. So would you lift your hands with me and just thank the Lord today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the edification of the saints. Thank you for the equipping, Lord, that you're giving into this body. Thank you, Father, that we are in your ark this morning. We feel your glory of your presence. And Lord, we receive this morning. You are heavenly, Father. We say welcome, Holy Spirit, into this place. We worship you and we love you. The King of my heart, be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my soul. Let the King shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my sing you are good you are good you're good Oh 
you're never gonna let me down. Let's just lift our hands and sing with this team today, you're this morning. Go ahead, Nancy. You're never, never gonna, gonna let. let me Thank down. you, Lord. People let us down. You're but you never, never let us never down. Gonna let we let our own stuff down, but God, you are down. faithful to your word. And we praise you this you're morning, Lord. Never gonna let oh, you're never gonna let me earth will pass away, down. but your word will remain forever. You're Hallelujah. 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 This morning as we gather together into this place, would you just reach over and take your neighbor by the hand this morning? We're going to pray together this morning as a, as a group and a body of believers. Amen. Hallelujah. Who are resisting me? There are those who are resisting me. Don't resist me. Try to bob bob bob. This morning, as we hear the word of the Lord sp prophesying over us today, we're grabbing our neighbors by the hand, and this is the prayer we're going to pray. Maybe that's you this morning. You haven't fully submitted yourself to the Lord. The Lord wants your submission this morning. He desires you to be fully submitted to Him because if you submit, you'll be part of the triumphant uh, band of believers uh, that will reign and rule forever uh, on this earth and then forever in heaven. And so it's important that we submit and say, Lord, I give you my heart today. Let Him be the King in your heart. Amen. So this morning, let's, let's pray together and ask the Lord, Lord, just take my heart. I give it to you today. You're the king in my heart today. I break down every barrier and every stronghold that's trying to stand against me fully submitting to your will today, God. I break down every stronghold and barrier, every wall of resistance, God. We tear down this morning, and Father, we ask that you just come and minister into this house and into this place today. Father, we bless your children this morning in this place today. And we thank you, Father, that your word is true. We receive your word and the revelation has sparked our spirits and stirred us into faith, Father, to believe that, Lord, that as we're your children, we're partakers of you and the good things of your kingdom. For the kingdom of God is peace and righteousness, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we thank you for that this morning, God. In the midst of a chaotic world, in the midst of a world that is suffering, in the midst of this world, we thank you, God, that we can come unto you and receive peace and joy, love, Father, acceptance. We thank you for that this morning. We bless you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you just lift your hands and just worship him for 20 more seconds and just thank him. Hallelujah, Thank you, Lord. You know, the Lord this morning is speaking into hearts today. There's a heart that needs to be touched and molded today. 
Their heart may be estranged from God, but this is the prophecy of the end time Old Testament. He said that there's coming one in the power. Uh, and Malachi says there's coming one in the power of a prophet, and he's going to turn the hearts of estranged fathers back to the illegitimate children. He's going to soften those hearts, and they're going to put relationship back together. You know that this morning, that's what the Heavenly Father's doing. He's saying that because of sin, he's become a far off, but he has a lamb that's been slain from the foundation of the world that loves you this morning and he's given himself his blood as an atoning sacrifice so that your heart can come to him and receive him as Lord and Savior and be put back in a place of fellowship with him today and this morning Angie asked me before if we would pray for her she's been battling these last couple weeks and we're going to pray for her today but if this if the Lord's speaking to you and you're here this morning you need the Lord to touch your heart pray with us as we're praying for Angie that the Lord will come. It just comes from your heart. Nobody can pray it for you. But as you pray to the Lord, the Lord will mold that heart today. Amen. He'll change that heart. He'll transform that heart. And He'll provide the way. Amen. Father, we come before you today and we pray for Angie. And God, as you see your request today, you know, God, that she loves you with everything she has in her heart today. Take every part of Lord, I ask you this morning that you would minister to her through the power of the Holy Ghost. There's an enemy that is attacking. But God, you're greater. You're stronger. And God, you're a blessing. And God, you make your children a blessing. And the blessing, Father, that resides over your children, Father, is in Angie's heart. The enemy is coming in to attack. But God, you're raising up a weapon against them today. You're raising up a weapon against the Antichrist, that spirit that's trying to attack her today, that spirit of Satan, Lord, that is sending his armies and cohorts. We break every kind of bondage in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask that you would minister to Angie this morning by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, touch her. Turn her situation around. Touch her mind today. Give her a blessing today, Father, from the top of her head to the sole of her foot, Father. Let your presence overshadow her. And Father, she just bask in your glory today. Thank you for a good report that's coming. In Jesus' name. Take every of me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, amen. Come on, give the Lord just a wave and a clap and a shout. And thank God today. Oh, thank you, God. Just take a moment, lift your hands. Take and from your every inner man, part of me. Oh, we be the king you, of my oh, heart. We thank you, Lord. Take we love every you. part of me. We praise be the you, king Lord. of my heart. We bless your holy name. Take you, every God. part of me. Us. Be the king Set of us on my heart. Your glory. Yeah. Take you. every part of me. Be the king of my heart. For he is great and great. Take every part of me. Be the king of my heart. Oh, we bless you today. We won't go back. Give it all to you. Oh, we bless you. I won't hold back. I give it all to you. I bless him today. I won't hold back. I give it. Yes. 
hearts of the children of God. for the power and the presence of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord praise today. Give him praise. Because the spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus. Amen. And we bless the Lord in this house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Pray God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this confirmation of your word by your spirit today. We thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, you may be seated this morning, and we want to keep that spirit of worship going this morning into this house because God is doing a great work. Amen. And this is confirming the word that I've got to give unto you this morning. But before we do, we've got a lot of things. Thank you to our musicians and singers. You can go down this morning. And we've got a lot of specials that are going to happen. And uh, we've got a lot of kids things that are going to go on. And, and then there's going to come a message. And uh, I don't want that anointing that you're feeling right now to escape. Because that power is, is here. Amen. And we want you to uh, uh, just continue staying in that. This morning, I'm going to have our ushers make their way down. If they will make their way forward today, we're going to receive this morning's tithing and offering. What a great way to stir into our worship, from, but from giving now. So I'm going to have Noah come up here. Noah is going to sing for you today while they receive the offering. Give Noah a great big hand today. And Noah, I'm glad to see all the Beasleys here today. And Noah won first place in uh, the state level of teen talent and male vocals, and so he's going to bless you with a song today as, the, as they receive this morning's offering. And I'm going to give you a microphone. Uh, I'm going to give him number two uh, to sing on, so you can sing on number two this morning. They do that. And then ushers, as you make your way down, we're going to bless the offering today. Thank you for sowing today. Thank you for giving. The Lord will bless you. Amen. So let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you for the offering that's being given today. Thank you for the seed sown. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity that we have to give. And God, as we give this morning in this offering, we know that it will be a blessing to the givers today because, Father, your word promised that as we sow seeds, we receive harvests. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead, no one sing. the light that pierces through you to the darkest hidden place it knows your deepest secrets but it never looks away it's the gentle hand that pulls you from the judgment of the crowd when you stand before 
for them guilty And you've got no way out Some may call But for every heart it rescues, it's a miracle It's nothing less than scandalous This love that took our place Just call it what it is Call it grace Placing crowns upon their heads It's the hope for our tomorrows The rock on which we stand It's a strong and mighty fortress Even hell can't stand again Nothing less than scandalous This love that took my place Just call it what it is Call it grace Call it grace Call it grace Amazing Unshaking This is grace This is grace Unchanging Unfailing This is grace This is grace Some may call and impossible But for every heart it rescues It's a miracle It's nothing less than scandalous That Jesus took our place Just call me what it is Just call me what it is Call it grace So you want to make plans to come these nights. We won't have services here, but we're going to have them at the campground. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Yes, so Pat, I'm going to testify. Okay, go ahead. As the Holy Ghost was talking to Paul Gold, talk to each and every one of us, to our youth, to our adults, to each and every one of you here. He said, you came too far to turn back now. Amen. So watch your lives. Keep him on your heart, and he will take you through whatever trial or temptation that we face. Yes, he will. Amen. Give the Lord a good praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, this morning, the GT kids are going to bless you with the dance. But before they do, there's a Father's Day uh, There's a Father's Day video they made. And so we're going to get that started and turn it up and uh, just watch uh, the GT kids. We need the audio. Go ahead and restart. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Restart. GT Kids presents Fatherhood. You nailed it. What is your father's name? Sam. Um, Robbie. Daddy. Anthony. Charlie. Brian. Uh, Robbie. 
Bob Hanson? Daddy. What do you like to do with your dad? Play dinosaurs. Wow. Fishing, maybe. Fishing. I play outside. Probably help. Sometimes play with shark games. A little every day. My dad got me cookies and donuts and egg cream. Paint. Um, work on our motorcycle. What is your father's favorite color? Blue, red, um, the cheese red, blue, green, um, red, 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 I'm pretty sure black, brown. What did your father teach you? He taught me how to ride my four-wheeler. Favorite airplane. job. To catch criminals at Home Depot. He works at um, this job where he has to be the, um, oh, his boss times it. I don't even know when his boss times it. Mm -hmm. And he, he works all night and he has to sleep a lot at daytime. Medical kind of thing. In, in the Navy. Um, to work. Um, he works at Home Depot for loss prevention. Uh, I remember his old job used to be making covers for books, but uh, I don't know what his new job is. Mega Coney Island. Um, to, to preach and the sorts. Fatherhood, you nailed it. You nailed it! You nailed it! You nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it. Nailed it. You 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 nailed it. Dad, you nailed it.
always buses, don't they? They're always great, and uh, they are doing a great job, amen, and we appreciate all the kids that always do really well and uh, try their very best, amen, and uh, do these things. After the service this morning, we're going to go to the gym. We have an open house for Dakota, and everyone here is invited to stay and participate. If uh, you like to just uh, head over to the gym today after the service and congratulate her on uh, uh on graduating high school and then blessing her uh, as she goes on into the next phase of her life. Amen. And so you're, you're welcome to stay and attend. They've got food, lunch back there. They've been putting a lot of hard work into it. Uh, Cecil Laverne, Brother Graham, uh, uh, great granddaughter, right? And Deanna's granddaughter and uh, their, uh, their whole family down here with her today. And so we appreciate all of them. Amen. And so we're going to have a great time uh, after service. In the morning at 10 a.m. right here at Glad Tidings, we're going to have Ernie's funeral and uh, Ernie Bowman's funeral. And if you're a uh, part of the funeral service team that's uh, been contacted to come and serve or come and bring food, uh, you can bring that anytime. I'm going to open up for the funeral home at 830. So anytime after 830, you can bring the, you put it in the cooler or the warmer. And uh, we appreciate that. Amen. And then also pray for the Haskin family, too. Uh, uh, they lost, Brother Darrell, Brother Steve lost uh, uh, their stepmother, uh, Kathy, and her funeral also is tomorrow. And that's at 11 o'clock. And so pe please be praying for them. The Lord would help them. Amen. And just give them strength and peace. All right. This morning, I want you to go with me to the book of uh, John chapter 3. Uh, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 3. Because in the book of Matthew chapter 3, going to share uh, this morning uh, on behalf of fathers about the, the power of the word of our Heavenly Father and about how uh, Christ this morning is our warrior Christ. You know, we've been conditioned on holidays uh, to gather together and we come to church on Christmas and we think about Jesus as being the little baby in the manger. Uh, but uh, uh, today on Father's Day, I wanted to remind everyone that's here that not, not only uh, had Jesus come into the world, he did come as a baby in the manger, but that's not how we left him. Uh, he rose again in victory, he ascended to heaven, and he's coming back a warrior Christ. And even as he uh, uh, walked on the earth, there was a warrior Christ that he walked in. He was a Christ and he was a warrior. And because he overcomes today, to all those that are part of the family of God, you get to participate in the power of that warrior Christ. And because he's triumphant, that means you're triumphant today. Amen. And so stand with me, if you will, as we read from the book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. It says, And when Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway up out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And verse 17, and then it says the heavenly father, a low and low a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word gives us power. Your word gives us life. Father, I prayed this morning that you would bless, uh, Father, the ministry time here today. And Father, I pray that it will touch the hearts of these that are gathered in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. <clears throat> this is a recorded time in our Bibles uh, that talk to us about the voice of the Father speaking, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. When you hear the voice of the Father, the voice of the Father speaking, and this is an audible voice that was spoken, and people heard it, and they heard that Jesus was the beloved Son, and they heard that God was pleased with the manifestation of what was happening with Jesus and what was going on. And then when we go to the next chapter in Matthew chapter 4, starting in verse 1, look what it says. And then it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, <clears throat> of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungered. <clears throat> and when the tempter came to him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil takes him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple 
and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it's written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou at any time dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil takes him into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto them, uh, uh, him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. Watch what happens here. The voice of the, of the Lord speaks. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And immediately he was taken into the wilderness led by the Spirit. And then as he was led by the Spirit, uh, he was fasting 40 days in the wilderness. And at a time when he was hungered, that's when it says Satan came. And he started to tempt him. See, God gives us a word that often challenges us. Uh, see, when God spoke that word, people heard that word. And then it says he was led in the spirit to the wilderness uh, to uh, be tempted of the devil. And so God will often give us a word which challenges us, seeking to implement change in our life, to give us direction and directives. Uh, that's what God wants to do. God will give us information and that information leads to revelation. And the revelation that we receive turns it into transformation. This is what the power of the word does. We begin to read the word. And the word of God gets into our hearts and lives. And it begins to manifest from information into, uh, uh, into revelation. And when we begin to get revelation of the word of God, the next step is to begin to see the transformation of your life changed. And when we look at Jesus today, we look at him as a, we look at him as a son of God, the second person of the Trinity, but we look at him as a warrior Christ who leads his armies into battle and he leads them into battle victoriously. This morning I want to remind you today that if you are a child of God, being a child of God means that you, that the violence, uh, that, the, you, that you suffer violence and the violence Violent, take it by force, the kingdom of God. And when the kingdom of God comes together, that you're a part of it, it's not just a time for just, we see a lot of times that women and children love to gather around in the churches and you look in churches and these are the women and the children, but where are the men? They don't realize that Jesus Christ is a warrior and he is, and if, if we would preach the warrior and if they would understand the warrior power of Christ, it's better than any movie that you could ever see. People love action movies. They, they, love, uh, uh, they love the uh, battle. They love the warfare. Well, there is a spiritual warfare that is going on in the heavenlies. Uh, and if we could understand it in our spirit that, that we are a major part in the kingdom of God and that we have the opportunity to be on this side of the word of God or that side of the word of God, we want to be on the inside of the word of God because when we understand he's a warrior, he's not coming back just uh, looking haphazardly and saying he's hoping that he can overtake the kingdoms of the world, that he can hopefully usher in peace, that hopefully there can be somebody that will allow him uh, to be able to bring peace in the world. But rather, Jesus says that when he comes into the world in a moment's time, he will take control of the whole world with his armies with him. And in a moment's time, uh, he will devour and slay the anti Christ and the false beast and the prophet and in a moment's time he will command an angel to take Satan and bind him and throw him into an abyss, the bottomless pit for a thousand years and in a moment's time he's not asking anybody, he's going to say to the people that are coming with him from the armies of heaven, there will be peace on the earth there will be peace and when he says there will be peace, there will be peace he doesn't have to ask anybody. He's not going to hope. He can, he's going to implement it because that's the warrior that he has. That's the warrior that he is, and that's the warrior we have on the inside of us this morning. Let me share this with you today. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 uh, through 17 says this. <clears throat> In Romans, it says, For as many 
that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So remember Jesus, who is the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, our Savior. He's also, we're called the joint heirs to the throne because of Jesus. And Jesus was led of the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But if we are led of the Spirit, then we too are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. That means he has signed you up as a son and a daughter this morning. That you can cry, Abba, Father. So on this day, we celebrate Father's Day. And there's many kinds of emotions that gather around on Father's Day. Some people will say, well, I never had a good dad. I never had a dad that was there with me. I, uh, my dad did whatever kind of excuses and situations and circumstances we find ourselves in. But for the child of God today... He has signed you and he has made you and he has sealed you with a spirit of adoption. And that you can cry, Abba, Father. You can cry out to your heavenly Father as Daddy this morning. And you can understand that he has sealed you with that kind of spirit. And so the enemy will try to forcefully take that away from you. When you receive the revelation knowledge, the information that leads a revelation that will change your life. That you don't have to fear this world or the adversary of this world. Because you have a heavenly Father that has given you a spirit of adoption that has made you a son and an heir, then you can cry out to him in your midnight hour, in your daytime hour, at any hour, and you can understand that he will respond to you. He will respond to you. And so on this Father's Day, we can cry out, Abba, Father, to our Heavenly Father, and thank him for giving us a spirit of adoption. Verse 17 says this. Go on further to one more scripture down. <clears throat> And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God, join heirs with Christ. And if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. You know, we're a part of a massive battle. We're a part of a massive kingdom. We're part of an army. We're part of a corporate uh, military that is called the kingdom of God. And it is led by God who sits on the throne, the Father. And the Son who is at His right hand making intercession for us. And the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity that's hovering on this world today. Filling us believers. That is the God that we have in our hearts today. The Holy Ghost. And when we have the Holy Spirit in us, we understand that we are not our own. We've been bought with a price through the blood of Jesus. We understand that it's by him that he's made us part of a kingdom. That we can be heirs to a throne. That we can receive the promises of God. That we can understand that, there, that God doesn't make promises and then doesn't keep those promises. But the promises that he makes, he keeps because he has the power to fulfill it. That's a warrior power that he has. So when the enemy comes against you and tries to steal that revelation from you, so that you're not transformed by the power of the word. You can remind the adversary that you have the warrior power of Christ living on the inside of you. And the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in me. And if I am dwelled in Christ, I am a child and an heir and a joint heir. And if he overcame, I overcame. And in this world there may be suffering. But be of good cheer, Jesus said, I've overcome the world. I've overcome it. And so you're dealing with an overcoming spirit this morning. If you're in the kingdom of God, you have an overcoming spirit on the inside of you. Now the devil's going to try to steal that away from you. He doesn't want you to have that revelation, knowledge, and understanding. He wants to keep you just passively sitting by. But actively, but actively serving God is an understanding that I can receive the information from the word of God. And it gives me revelation in my life. And transformation will happen because of it. I want you to understand this morning that Satan cannot stop God. He, Jesus was led out into the spirit, into the wilderness. And at a low point in his time, fasting 40 days, he was hungry. And Satan came and tempted him. And yet Jesus, by the word of God, refuted the words of Satan being hungry 40 days. Let me tell you this morning, church, that Jesus was able to set the devil to flight because even at a point when he was hungry, 40 days in a wilderness, in a desert area, he was able to overcome the devil. 
And because that, because he overcomes the devil, that is the power that we have in us this morning. So we can overcome any obstacle. The Bible says there has been no temptation that's given to man, but there's but such common to man. And that will not overtake you, but in that way, Jesus says that he will be there as a warrior Christ. And Paul tells us in Corinthians that he will make a way of escape for you. You know what we deal with when we deal with a warrior Christ? We deal with a God who will make a way where there seems to be no way. You know, when we deal with a warrior Christ, I mean, you. there's men that love watching Rambo movies. Anybody like watching Rambo movies? They're thrown down in the jungle. I watched them when I was a kid, right? And he was thrown down in the jungle, and he cut himself a way out. I mean, that's the kind of warrior Rambo was. And so we're talking about somebody greater than Rambo. We're talking about the spirit of Christ, the power of Christ, Jesus Christ. We're talking about him who, when you're found into a wilderness spot, He'll cut you away through a path in the jungle places. And when you're, you're in a dry and desert land, you know what he'll do for you? He can put an oasis around you. He can put a water in the desert and he can cut paths in the jungle. That's a kind of power of God that works inside his body today. Now, listen to this. When, uh, when we begin to understand that information leads to revelation that should result in transformation, this is what happens. Uh, things begin to happen, and then the enemy begins to get nervous. Uh, Jesus was led out into the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry, and after battling, uh, being led 40 days, he began to battle the devil because he understood. He heard the word of the Father that said, I, I am pleased with my son. I am pleased. This is my beloved son. He had a confirmation from the father that this was a beloved son that he was pleased in and the devil got nervous and when we receive a word of God into our heart and life, the adversary of our souls gets nervous because he understands that if you get the revelation and you get the power of the revelation of the word that come to you that you can put him to flight. That you can destroy the works of the devil. Remember last week. That's why I said for this reason was the son of God made manifested. To destroy the works of the devil. When we get the revelation of the power of God on the inside of us. It will destroy the works of the devil. Because it's coming through Jesus Christ. So when God speaks to you. Satan's going to strike at you. And when God fills you. What's going to happen? The devil's going to fight you. But God's getting ready to multiply what the devil is attacking. So as much as the devil is attacking, what the children of God can do is we can believe that whatever he's stole, whatever he's attacking, whatever he's taken, we as the power of the children of God in this world have the ability to say, devil, you've got to give it back and we're going to get it back and seven times greater. Seven times greater. You know how it comes back seven times greater? It doesn't come back seven times greater because Jesus just actively sits by and, and he goes before the devil as the loser and says, Devil, can I negotiate with you? Can you please help the people down here at Glad Tidings this morning? Could you please just give them back? You've taken a little bit too much from what they really need and they need some help. Could, could you? That's not what he does. He doesn't negotiate with the devil. He put his word into motion and he defeated the devil. He said, I put my foot on the serpent's head and the heel bruised his head. And now he said this. He said, you can put your heel on his head and it will give you peace in your life because you understand that he is under your feet. He's under your feet. And so here's the peace of God in your life that you can have. That the devil's under your feet. You have bruised his head. That's a, that's a military strategy right there, folks. Uh, it's something for us to get excited about. We serve a Christ uh, who is a warrior, who has overcome the devil, that puts his foot on his head and says, I stake my claim over this world. I hold the keys that he held of death and hell and the grave. I hold them in my hand right now. I hold those keys together today and I give that power and Jesus said all power in heaven and earth was given to Jesus and then when he went away he told his disciples what he says I give them to you if you use my name in my name in my name 
you can cast out devils. In my name, you're going to be able to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. In my name, because it's a powerful name. I mean, it was so powerful. People were trying to cast out devils. And the devils were trying to say, I don't know who you are or how you're casting me out. This is happening in the book of Acts here, folks. Uh, the, the devil's saying to these people that are casting them out, they're like, I don't know what kind of power you got. I don't know who you are. See, I know who Paul is. I know who Paul the apostle. Is. I know his power and I know who Jesus is, but who in the world are you? It's because we're not exercising the power of Christ. Jesus' name overcomes the adversary. And in my name, Jesus said, you can cast out devils. So that means Satan cannot stop God. So this is what we can say this morning. That we may not even be able to put into words the magnitude of the move of God that he's so wanting to do to bless his children. But what it has caused is it has caused the devil to attack and to fight and to battle us at a different, all different levels today. And you know what he's trying to attack? He's attacking families. He's trying to attack families. And he's trying to separate fathers and mothers from their children. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to break up households. Because he understands the power that's in a family. He understands a blessing that comes in that way. He tries to tear down families. He's trying to tell people that you can, you can take your God-given instilled DNA in you. And you can have it altered. And you can say you who are, whoever you want. Now, for years, the church, the world's been talking about how terrible it is that Christians are name it and claim it and believe it, say it and believe it. But now what has happened is they've told us that you can't do that so much. Now the world's taken that kind of cue. And now they say, I'm not a man. I'm a whatever I want to be. <laughs> I've named it and I've claimed it. And, you got, and now what happens? Transgendered men running women's races, and they've won two medals because they're, because they're running in women's races. They haven't changed their DNA. They just say they're a woman. So they become a woman. You know, this is what's happening today. The devil is trying to sneak in and destroy down men who, are, who can be, have the opportunity to become fathers. They're trying to tell you, you don't need to go to church. You don't need all that church stuff. Because all it is is for women and children. It's just for babies, you know. You're, you're supposed to be a man, right? And men don't need church. That's what the devil tried to say. I mean, look around. You can tell in the world today this is what's happening in, in, in churches. around. But you know what's happening is it's because we're forgetting that it's, we do need church. We need the leadership of the warrior Christ who has conquered Satan. And Satan's job, his goal, this is what he does. He deceives people in the world. He deceives people. And this is, goes all the way from the beginning of time when he deceived Adam and Eve. All the way to today, he's still deceiving people. And he's trying to wear out the saints. Daniel prophesied and said that his job is to wear out the saints. Wear down the saints. And then today, we're going to see, if we go to Revelation, you're going to see how that he is loosed from the abyss. And he goes around and he deceives People. He's a deceiver. That's what Satan is. And he will deceive you. He will only tell you lies. He will only tell you truths, have truths that become full lies. Because when you only take a context, when you take a text out of context, it becomes a pretext and it isn't even worth anything. It's a lie, is what it is. And so Satan works in deception. And if he can deceive you, what does he do? He pulls, the, he pulls you out of the power of God. He pulls you out of being joint heirs with Christ. He pulls you from his kingdom, and he pulls you into his kingdom. But I want to show you just how powerful Christ is and remind you that you need to be in Christ today. How powerful is it to be in Christ? This is how powerful it is. I want you to go with me It's uh, uh, to uh, Revelation chapter 19. Let me share this with you for a moment, though. This is the struggle that Satan has. The Satan, Satan has always struggled with the word of God. The word of God is what Satan's always struggled with. Because when God spoke a word to Jesus, he struggled with it. 
And then as, as Jesus speaks a word, Satan struggles with it. And remind you that in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was there in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. Verse 10 of John chapter 1 says that He came into this world, and the world didn't even know Him. He made this world, but they didn't recognize or know Him. But in verse 14 it says this, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Now, this is talking about Jesus Christ coming from heaven to earth. He made the earth. But when he came to earth, the owner showed up and nobody knew who the owner was. And they didn't recognize him. And it says that he was made flesh and he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Now watch this. He is the word of God. In Revelation chapter 19, starting in verse 11. We're going to read this passage together here. This is what it says. It says, And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him was called Faithful and True. This is Jesus Christ we're talking about today. He is faithful and he is true today. He is a faithful and true to the end. He is faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. He makes war. He makes war in righteousness, folks. He makes war in righteousness. This is a warrior. A warrior makes war. That's what he does. But he has the ability because he has the power of God. He is God. And he has that power and ability to judge and to make war. Look at verse 12. Go on one more scripture down. His eyes were blazing flame of fire. His eyes were a blazing flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew, but only he himself. He was clothed in a vesture, dipped in blood. A robe he was wearing, it was dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The word of God. Satan always struggles with the word of God. The struggle you're going through with Satan is not about you. It's about the word of God. Because when you're in Christ and Christ is in you, you may be going through a battle, but he's not caring about you. He's caring about the word of God. He always struggled with the word of God. Watch what happens. We go on a little bit further down to verse 16. And he hath on his vesture. And on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He has a vesture that's dipped in blood that shows us that it's by his blood that we're saved. And the blood of his enemies uh, uh, will flow because he doth judge and he doth make war. And he's clothed in a vesture dipped in blood and his name's called the word of God. And he has a sash that he wears and it's written down on his side of his armor uh, that he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. There is no one greater. There is no one who's more powerful. There's no warrior that can overtake him. But in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, when he does judge and when he does make war, you want to make sure that you're with him. You want to make sure you're in him. You want to make sure you're on his side. Because folks, you can either be on this side of the Word of God or you can be on that side of the Word of God. And look what happens if you're on this side of the Word of God. Let's go on down a little bit further to verse number uh, uh, 16. Number 20, I mean. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. He was deceived that had received the mark of the beast. See, Satan has deceived people to receive the mark of the beast, and they that worship him in his image. These were both cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him who sat upon the horse, with sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Think about what's happening here, folks. On a Father's Day, we got to remind ourselves, 
Jesus wasn't a, isn't a pacifist uh, that's just sitting by. He is ruling an army and a kingdom. And he's looking for every man and every woman and every boy and every girl. He's looking for every father and he's looking for every mother to be part of this kingdom. Because his kingdom shall reign. His choice to you though is, do you want to be in him or do you want to be without him? If you're in him, well, uh, if you're in him, I'm telling you it's a lot better than to be without him. Because if you're on this side, of him. It says out of his mouth proceeds a sword. And it says they were all slain. That means they all were killed. That were without him. Because they were deceived of the devil. So next time you start feeling a lie from the enemy that comes to well up on the inside of you. You just say devil you are a liar. Devil, you are a liar. I am in Christ and heir to the throne of God. Uh, and I have the ability in Jesus' name to be able to cast you out. Just as Jesus has the power that he defeated you, I have that same ability. Amen. Now watch this. Jesus isn't even going to wrestle with the devil. Jesus isn't even going to wrestle with the devil. He took the beast, the false prophet. He slain those with a sword out of his mouth. But when it comes to Satan... Because he's saying always wants to wrestle with the word of God. He always has a problem with the word of God. But this is just showing us the might of the warrior of our heavenly father and the power of his Christ. The Bible goes on and says that there's an angel. There's an angel that's being dispatched. And that angel that's being dispatched is coming with chains. And that chains that he carries is going to bind that devil. It's going to bind Satan. And he's going to be thrown into the abyss. We think Jesus and Satan's going to get in a wrestling match. And we're going to say which one's going to be able to overthrow him. But his problem is he's always had a problem and wrestle with the word of God to take the place over the word of God. But Jesus said the power of God is so great that he's not even going to wrestle with the Satan at that time. He's going to have an angel. He's going to send a messenger angel. He's going to have a message for Satan. That you are no match for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is no ability. I don't even have to lift a finger to bind you. I just speak the word and an angel got commissioned to go and defeat you, Satan. Satan wants to take precedent over the word of God, but he can't, church. He can't. Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth. And then for us that are part of the kingdom of God, this is the greatest promise we have on this Father's Day. Remind yourself of this for our Heavenly Father. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 6. It says, They that overcome, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. He shall inherit. You have an inheritance that is awaiting you, heaven and earth. You have a new heaven that's coming. You have a, you have a eternity that is awaiting. And if you overcome, you shall inherit all things. And then I will be his God. So he will be our theos. He will be our God. He will be the one we worship. But God says, you're not just going to be my subjects. See, he's not going to be the king that we just come and worship as a subject. But he said, I will be his God. We will worship him as God. But he said, I'm going to respond to you. As my son. As my son. You're going to be a son and you're going to be a daughter in the kingdom of God. And we will worship him and we will praise him. And he will be our God. He will be our Theos, the God above all gods, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But he will respond to us as a son. That means, that means when we worship, we worship God. And then that means when we worship God, he just doesn't say next. He inhabits the praises. He comes to where you are and he receives you and he cares for you. And he asks, what is it that you need? And your need is fulfilled. Our father shows providence. And what happens about God is he said, I'm your Jehovah Jireh. I will see to it all provision is met. Earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their children. 
But just think about how much more our Heavenly Father will give the Holy Ghost to them that ask. Just think if you ask for, if he asks for bread, will he give him a stone? No, but when he asks that what you need, how much more are you able to help? So today, you may not have had an experience with a father that was very good in your life. But I'm telling you that if you will worship and be part of the heavenly father and be in the kingdom of God and in the power of Christ and be his and let him be yours. Yes, there's a lot of references to the bride of Christ and to uh, uh, to these references that seem to make us sound like it's a, a feminized state. But it's only it's only an analogy to remind us uh, that we are Christ's, uh, that we are his and he is mine, that he loves us. So much that this is what he is. He's making us his. He's given us a spirit of adoption. So that means that we can go and we can receive everything as an inheritance of what belongs to our father. We have a part in what belongs to our father. And if you are estranged from the father today, you have the ability this morning to come back to him and say, Lord, I don't want to be on that side of the word of God. I don't want to be consumed with the sword that comes out of your mouth that slays those that are deceived of the devil. But I want to be in you. I want to hear the word that comes from you. I want to hear the word that makes demons tremble. I want to hear that word. And I want to worship and I want to be a part of that kingdom. That when, when you speak to me, it makes the devil get uneasy. Because it's imparting revelation knowledge. That's going to lead to greater transformation in our life. We have the ability because we have a warrior Christ this morning who loves us. And he battled Satan and Satan lost. Satan left. And it says in Matthew 4.11, angels came and ministered to him. You know, this morning I'm closing. If our musicians make their way back to the platform, I want to share this with you. We are in a battle, but you are not in a battle by yourself. You are in warfare, but you are not in warfare by yourself. You are part of a kingdom that is great. You have an Abba Father that loves you. That if you will be in Christ, he will be your God, but he will be my son. This morning, no matter what you face, he has an angel that can be dispatched to help you. He has an ability to send forth a word and change your life. He can give a command to an angel and stop a spiritual attack. You can pray and you can ask and you can seek and you can knock. And he'll open doors of opportunities for you. Because he's our God that can do the impossible. And we are his sons today. So this morning, I want to ask you, are you a son? Are you a daughter? Are you an heir? Are you a joint heir? You know, Jesus Christ has gone before us and he showed us the way. And when we accept him as Savior and Lord, what we're saying is I accept your, I accept your blood as a sacrifice for my sin. And I repent of my ways and I will live for you. Because you have paved the way in victory for me. And so I will live for you with all my heart for all my life. It sounds pretty powerful what Jesus can do. It sounds pretty powerful because he is powerful. See you.